Alright gang, so we're brewing up some coffee right now. We're doing something a little bit different. I'm attempting today a pour over V60 kind of thing, except we're using Melita filters. Um, but yeah, generally a lot more different than the French press that I'm used to. But really quick you guys, it's a very, very special day. We announced the 100K giveaway with the Darkroom Lab. And right now we are sitting at 98,700. We're getting very, very close you guys. And once we hit 100K, I will go ahead and post up on Instagram how you can win the cameras. So let's go ahead and get this coffee brewed up. I am very excited for today's video topic. We're gonna be talking to you guys today about my daily drivers. Two of the cameras that I have been shooting pretty much every single day and uh, I can't seem to put down and it's probably not what you guys think they are, so stay tuned. Okay, let's taste it. I don't know why, but it has like a, a cleaner taste. I don't know how to describe it, man. It's good, let's just say that, it's good. All right, you guys, so the reason why we are making a video today is to talk about my daily driver. Essentially, that is a term coined by people in to cars and whatnot, you know, they usually have one of their project cars and then they have their daily driver car, which is the one that gets used all the time. Well, we're gonna take those terms into photography and we're gonna talk about two cameras that I have been using like crazy in the last couple of weeks. And I don't know what it is, but one of them, you guys are probably not gonna be surprised of, but the other one, folks, it's, it's a big switch up. Okay, so the two cameras that I have been quote unquote daily driving is an SLR as well as a point and shoot. Now for the point, okay, maybe not a point and shoot. For the smaller camera, I usually keep it in this thing right here. This is like a little Herschel bag that I picked up a long time ago. And it's just really convenient to be able to strap on when you go out, maybe even to the store or just out into the city and whatnot. Now the camera that is in here, you guys, is of course the one and only Olympus XA. Now, you guys know, man, I love the Olympus XA to death. It is my all-time favorite rangefinder camera. And uh, a lot of you guys get upset that I say it's a point and shoot. And the reason why I refer to it as a point and shoot is because it's tiny. But the Olympus XA has a very sharp 35 millimeter 2.8 lens. I mean, just look at the very, very nice front element there. Super, super, super cool. And also it has a max aperture of 2.8, which is great because this is an aperture priority camera. All you gotta do is take this little dial here and select the aperture that you want. Now, this camera can also take two different types of flashes. I think it's just with the A11, but I have the A16 a little bit bigger. It sits on the side of here, so when I do go out at nighttime and whatnot and I wanna take photographs, I have that nice flash. And the cool thing is it's detachable. You don't need to always have it on there and uh, you can carry it around in a very miniature size like this one. Uh, again, if you guys have never ever tried one of these before, I'd highly recommend it. It's one of the best range finders and it's under like 150 bucks. You can probably get it around 150 to $200 in a good condition. Uh, but nonetheless, it's an excellent camera and I have been driving this thing into the ground. Uh, in the last couple of weeks. Now the next camera that we have folks is a camera we are going to be giving away uh, very soon here once we hit 100K. And it's a camera that I've owned for two, three years now and I have on off relationships with this thing um, just because it is a SLR camera. That camera you guys is the Nikon F3. Now the F3 is very similar to like the Canon F1 uh, in terms of it being a kind of prosumer SLR modeled film body. 
uh, but man this thing is extremely smooth and I forgot how fun it was to shoot with this thing I've been doing a couple of videos with Trev from the darkroom lab and this has been the main workhorse uh, making most of the photographs that we make for those videos um, with the f3 and I've been switching between two different lenses I have right now on the 35 millimeter 2.8 uh, you guys know 35 mil is my favorite focal length, but also the 28 millimeter is great for more wide angle stuff. And uh, what I really love about the F3 is just that it feels like one of the most elegant pieces of photographic equipment that has ever been made. So check this out. The lever right here has 11 ball bearings. I'm going to go ahead and take a photograph. Check this out. It is super smooth to advance and here, let me open that up really quick check it out again it's very smooth it's also pretty quiet not the most quiet thing in the world um, it also has aperture priority as well as shutter speeds built into one two thousandths of a second it does take a battery but look at this it has a removable prism so you can get that nice waist level finder going if you are doing like landscapes uh, going to yosemite doing street photography all of that good stuff and it's super customizable so again we are giving away a nikon f3 uh in the uh, 100k giveaway that is coming up very soon so if you guys haven't checked that out already follow me over on instagram because that is where it will be taking place uh, but this is such an amazing camera you guys i just cannot say more good things about it now i want to carry on this video to talk past just the cameras i want to talk about some of my inspirations as well as some of the film stocks that i have been shooting you know, I made a video a couple weeks back talking about what film stocks I'm going to be shooting in 2021, but I want to just retouch on one of them as well as show you guys the books that I have been getting into. So the film stock that I've been shooting like crazy lately is Kodak Gold. Uh, recently with Fuji 400H being discontinued, you know, it really didn't make too big of an impact on me because I never really shot it. But in terms of like Fuji Superior and Fuji 200, those two are like pretty much the only two Fuji stocks left. To switch things up, I shot a lot of Kodak Gold because I was just shooting too much Fuji at that time. And uh, Kodak Gold, man, is a banger. I I'm telling you guys, it's the cheaper version of, I don't know, Portra. I guess you could say it's 200 ISO, so it's different than 400. Maybe it's similar to Portra 160. It's not exactly, but um, it's a step under. There are a lot of good deals on Kodak Gold, especially in like your local camera shop. So support your local businesses, go check those out. But if you guys can't do that right now, I understand with the COVID restrictions and everything, uh, I will leave links in the description to some Amazon links that I have been getting some of my film from. So check those out. But again, I would highly recommend just go ahead and support your local business if you can. Now in terms of like inspiration, I have been in a very, very bad drought, uh, meaning I just can't really seem to get in the group and sometimes it's just gonna be like that uh, but there are two books that i have been looking at that have been really making me excited to go out to shoot the first one here you guys is a book that has been featured on this channel multiple times and that is the interviews and conversations from Henri cartier bresson but in this book there are no photographs essentially these are just interviews and conversations that he's had with different reporters with different you know museum owners and whatnot uh, and it's just really cool to be able to read into some of the things that he talks about and uh, maybe even transfer that over into your own work that is a very interesting read on Cartier Brisson's interviews and conversations um, but for the other book you guys I've been looking at it's this one right here it's Fred Herzog's Modern Color so Fred Herzog unfortunately passed away last year but he had some amazing photography and I think he was based out in Canada um, but I'll give you guys a quick little preview without there being too much you know reflected light here but a lot of like downtown scenes um, from where he's from you know crazy little scenes like this little boy here with I think these are chickens and uh, probably you know most important for me are the colors in his images and just the insane amount of pastels that he can get out of these images here so here's the one that was on the front cover but Fred Herzog modern color if you guys ever get the chance to check this book out it is one of the best books for inspiration in my opinion when it comes to like color street work um, it's a mastermind so Check it out. I have been enjoying this book like crazy. But that's the little catch up game that we have for you guys today. Those are the cameras, the film, the books that I have been looking at lately. And I want to hand the mic over to you guys, man. So what have you guys been doing lately? Have you guys been shooting, you know, any certain cameras, special cameras? Uh, what 
films are you shooting, books, inspiration, let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear it. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this week's video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. As always, Minolta Gang.